Hi, Mitch Wenger back with another video on data analytics and machine learning. In this video, we'll discuss clustering. Hope you enjoy. Okay, let's get started. What is cluster analysis? Well, cluster analysis is typically an unsupervised data mining technique. So what that means is that we don't have a target attribute in mind. We're interested in seeing whether the examples naturally fall into different groups. This can be useful in developing a deeper understanding of the data, in particular, uncovering additional whys. So clustering is basically another technique that we can use with the similarity notions we discussed earlier. So what kind of applications can we use clustering in? Well, there are plenty of ways that we can use clustering. Uh, it can be used to help marketers find distinct groups in their customer bases, characterize those customer groups based on purchasing patterns, etc. Clustering is actually used in taxonomy building in biology for plant and animal taxonomies, categorizing genes with similar functionality. Insurance companies use it to identify groups of auto policy holders. Which of them have a higher average claim cost? How can we categorize them? What types of attributes fit those in higher risk categories? We can classify documents on the web for information discovery. We can also just simply gain insight into the distribution of data. Getting back to an earlier topic we discussed, we can use it to group our coffees, wines, beers, and liquors. And of course, it can be used as a pre-processing step for other downstream tasks. Uh, maybe supervised tasks such as classification. But when it comes to clustering, we've got a number of considerations. Dimensionality is one of the key considerations. A lot of the clustering algorithms work best on smaller data sets with low dimensionality and only numeric attributes. But of course, a lot of our data sets don't come prepackaged that way. There's a lot of other types of data. Data sets can get large as well. So when we do have those large data sets, the algorithms need to be able to deal with things like scalability, handling millions of data objects, handling objects with different types of attributes, binary, nominal, ordinal. Cluster shapes may not be tight and circular. So Cluster techniques need to also be able to discover clusters with arbitrary shapes. And of course, like many of our other techniques, domain knowledge is important. And domain knowledge helps us determine which input parameters are most useful, help us evaluate the results of the clusters that are defined. Of course, like uh, other techniques, we want to be able to deal with noisy data. Outliers can influence the results of the clustering. We want to make sure that the techniques are insensitive to the order of input records. Clusters that result from the clustering process may end up being difficult to explain. So intelligibility, interpretability, usability are considerations here. How can we make something useful out of those clusters? And if we can't, well, then we may have to look into other approaches or other ways to develop those clusters. So that's it for our intro to clustering. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the videos on key clustering techniques in this series.